And my mother was a great influence on me, my brother and my sister. She encouraged us to draw a great deal. My father, he was a maker and that was a great inspiration to me, but also an introduction into using tools and handling tools. I found work uh, as a technician, mould making and pattern making. During that period of employment, I studied painting at a local college, combined the two, painting and a technical skill in pattern and mould making, and arrived at sculpture. I then approached um, some design companies and managed to find work with those people. That was an introduction into large scale, high profile sculpture, television props, film props, visitor centres, heritage centres, so lots of uh, fine work, monumental work. All the time my skills were building and I was producing a body of work. I made an application to the Royal Society of British Sculptors in 2000 and was successful with that application, so I'm now a member of that organisation. I've run various studios along the way, had a good degree of success with commissions and sales and I'm now operating from my studio here in Lavent where I'm producing a new body of work. I was first approached by Richard Plowman who uh, he runs and organises the Art in Action event locally uh, and which I get involved in. Uh, he approached me on that occasion asking if I'd be interested in producing a maquette of Sir George Murray, who was in fact Nelson's right-hand man, uh, a closer companion and friend than Hardy, in fact. I showed great interest in producing this work, uh, but in order to understand exactly what Richard had in mind, I asked if he would be kind enough to produce a drawing well, I've done a little sketch, Vincent. Um, the idea behind this is that nobody really will know about uh, Admiral Sir George Murray, but everybody will be know about Admiral Nelson. So I thought that would be a very good idea. The idea was perhaps to put Murray just behind Nelson, and in fact, that was as captain of the fleet, that was very much his role. He was the man behind Nelson, and he was responsible for making sure that the, the navy worked for him if all the ships worked. So. I wondered about that. Um, what do you think? I mean, is it something? Well, that, that gives me a really good idea of um, you know what you're expecting. Okay. I'll try and get a little more animation into the figures. These do look quite static. Well, I think that's something to do with the drawing process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, either a twist in the body or all the heads angled. Mm -hmm. um, also, we can think about the clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, whether they are both wearing hats or whether. Yes, yeah, so I wondered about the hats. Whether they would actually. Um, be a problem with casting or anything like that? No, you should never compromise the sculpture is that right, for, for, that for the moulding yeah, purposes. Yeah, okay. So, could I remove a hat? Yes, you can remove a hat. That's not going yeah. to offend the sort of... No, no, not at all. In fact, um, often during battle they would take their hats off. I mean, I can experiment initially with um, hats on, hats off, one hat on. So, other things I need to consider, the sword. That yeah, is, I could see. Yeah. As you've got it, it's sort of quite vulnerable. So, mm. I'll try and tuck it in, but, you know, make it look natural. Right, OK. Uh, and I, I think I'll probably, if I can get a twist in the body and a turn on the head, I'll have them both focused on a, a point on the horizon. Basically what I like to do is create a 3D sketch yeah. uh, in the selected modelling material okay. uh, and sort of work with that. And it'll be based on an aluminium armature wire so I can sort of twist it and turn them and experiment with the, the pose and the attitude of the two figures and the relationship regarding distance together. Mm. At that point, I'll invite you along to see what I've done. Yes, and okay. Then, and then we can sort of put our heads oh, together. Oh, well, that'd be great. I'll look just, forward to that. Uh, and we'll let it evolve, I think, naturally like that. Mm -hmm. In order to execute the Nelson Murray maquette, uh, I first rough out a picture of a human being in proportion that I will eventually plot the armature within. So this drawing is based on my bank of knowledge of human anatomy. In other words, the average body height is seven and a half heads. So we'll take this measurement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So we know this is an average human being. Two figures, of course, Nelson and Murray. Murray was over six feet. Nelson was, um, well, five foot eight or thereabouts, so a little bit shorter. 
I'm not interested at this stage in the pose. All I'm interested in is establishing the armature in correct proportion with a view to applying the wax, setting the pose, and then introducing perhaps Nelson at that stage and working on them separate but considering them together. Having established the human form in pencil, I'm now going to set about plotting the armature uh, with the use of a sort of a marker pen. We'll start with a vertical line straight down through the figure, crossing at the shoulder, but within the shoulders, straight down. Uh, this projects beyond and through the feet in order to attach to a baseboard. So establishing the armature. At this stage, the aluminium armature wire, wire can project on through the hands. There's no reason why not, because I can clip this off later on. The purpose of the armature is simply to support the wax and to be confident that it's in proportion. Working with the armature is of great interest because uh, there's an opportunity to experiment with the pose and attitude of the figure. Being aluminium, it's uh, malleable, so you can sort of manipulate it into more or less any position, realistically with the figure, of course, uh, that you desire. Uh, its fundamental job, of course, is to support the wax or clay or whatever the modeling, modeling material is. Really, what you're trying to do is, in fact, bend every joint, put some form of interest, some animation into every joint of the figure to get the best out of the sculpture. Uh, and also, being portraits of both Nelson and Murray, there's a good degree of studying uh, any photographic imagery there are, or drawings or paintings, in order to create a, a good likeness. It's interesting to try and establish the pose in the outset, in the armature wire. Uh, you then gradually start applying the wax and establishing the larger planes and the main muscle groups and gradually over a period of days you start to refine and get more and more detail into the work. So I'm preparing for moulding now. In order to do that, I'm separating the two figures out. So I've removed Murray uh, from the composition here and set it up on its own base. Uh, I'm going to employ a moulding technique which is called box moulding, whereby I'll construct a box around the sculpture, seal it at the bottom and also the sides, because as you can appreciate, when I pour the rubber in, there's quite a lot of pressure there and it'll force out any little air or gaps in the box construction. When that rubber has set, deconstruct the box and I'll run a scalpel right over the sides and top in order to open the two halves of the rubber mould up to take the maquette out. Now, various things I need to consider here. I've decided to remove uh, Murray's left arm here because it's extended and it's obviously going to make the box larger than it need be and therefore more rubber than I'd like to use. So his arm has been taken off and I'm halfway through moulding this here. Another consideration is when I have the rubber mould with the maquette removed up the other way, pouring the resin in for casting can trap air in the mould and I really want to avoid that at all cost. So I have to vent air and this is what these rods are doing here. 
these will become hollow tubes in the mould and they will vent air as I pour the moulding material in. So everything is in order here. I've pre-prepared the box that is tailored to fit as snugly around Murray as it can in order to use a minimum of rubber, but a good amount of rubber, so there's some rigidity there. So this morning I'm going to open up the mould in order to um, remove the wax from the mould and prepare the mould for pouring the resin into. The, the rubber has set nicely overnight, so it's a question of removing this box first of all. To get access to the rubber. I run a scalpel the length of the rubber and then gradually peel this rubber off and I see <clears throat> immediately that all the detail is recorded in that rubber mould so I'm very pleased with that take the wax out put the wax maquette to one side I'm not too interested in that now it's the mold that I will focus all my attention on so it's a question now of assembling it back together in preparation for pouring So this process is essentially called filing and fettling. What I'm doing is casting my eye over the entire surface, looking at the sculpture from every conceivable angle, taking away any flash lines, in other words, where the two moulds come together. Sometimes you can get a line as there is just there on his collar. So just file that one away. And just check it from every conceivable angle to make sure everything is as it should be. And just checking for any little discrepancies that shouldn't be there and taking them off with a tool here that's called a riffler. It's got quite a sharp serrated edge, which means I need to apply very little pressure and once that's done, I can then consider offering the sculpture up onto the base alongside Murray. So I'm positioning now the sculpture on the base. I've already predetermined where it's going to go. I've drilled the base and set in some pins that go up the length of the leg, both Murray and Nelson. 
I've uh, prefabricated the saws, they've, the swords, they've now been grafted into position. Uh, just a final sort of check over and now I'm ready to apply colour which I'll use an acrylic paint and more or less stipple it on in the first instance driving it into all the sort of detail the nooks and crannies and often that process reveals some pinhole areas that require further filling so that this process of colouring it is quite useful regarding starting to understand the final surface but other than that I'm ready now for the first application of colour. seen a little bit of what's been going on during the process but uh, we're now ready to unveil this wonderful statue so I think let's have a go Vincent. I hope you enjoyed the film. My name is Richard Plowman and I'm chairman of the Murray Club. It's been a remarkable journey and thank you for joining us along the way. When we first set up the Murray Club, we had two objectives. The first objective was to raise the profile and awareness of Admiral Sir George Murray, our Chichester hero. The second was to take the valuable documents and objects in the Murray collection, including the Golden Sword, for the people of Chichester. These objectives have been achieved. But we have a long-term aim, and the long-term aim is here. Today, we have revealed this wonderful statue, this fabulous statue by Vincent Gray of Nelson and Murray together. It is our long-term aim to have a full-size scale bronze of this particular statue here in Chichester. We are starting a campaign to raise the money but it is going to cost us £50,000, and for that we need your help. We can't do it alone. We'll be doing various fundraising things along the way, including a special editions of these. We have nine special editions, and wouldn't you like to own one of those? Our tiny band of brothers and sister is not enough. We do need your help. Thank you. <laughs>